today i am here to discuss about the first topic of instrumental method of analysis and the topic is ultraviolet visible spectroscopy today i am going to discuss about spectroscopy and introduction to ultraviolet spectroscopy so before starting ultraviolet spectroscopy it is very important to know about the modern instrumental methods which are used for this determination of structures of various compounds there are various methods which are used for structural determinations first method used for the determination of a structure is known as nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy in short form it is also known as nmr spectroscopy nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy is very useful for the determination of carbon hydrogen nitrogen sulfur and phosphorus infrared spectroscopy in short form it is known as ir spectroscopy ir spectroscopy is used for the determination of functional groups third method is mass spectrometry which is used for the determination of molecular mass next method is ultraviolet spectroscopy and visible spectroscopy ultraviolet spectroscopy as well as visible spectroscopy is used for the determination of conjugation of compounds in short form it is known as uv visible spectroscopy fifth method is x ray spectroscopy and it is used for the determination of surface morphology of different compounds sixth and seventh method include atomic absorption and atomic emission spectroscopy and these methods are used for the determination of various elements combinedly these all methods are used for the determination of exact structure of any compound under investigation now next topic is spectroscopy spectroscopy is the branch of science that deals with the study of interaction of electromagnetic radiation with matter so in spectroscopy we study interaction of electromagnetic radiation which is a form of energy with substance under investigation so when the electromagnetic radiation of certain type is incident upon any substance under investigation it produces a specific spectrum spectrum study generates the base of spectroscopy now we will just understand spectroscopy by this representation now when any physical stimulus uh, means emr which represents electromagnetic radiation is incident upon any molecule which is under investigation it generates a response detecting instrument detect that response and generates a spectrum spectrum is a visual representation of the various structural properties of the molecule so study of this spectrum is the base of spectroscopy now electromagnetic radiation electromagnetic radiation consists of discrete packages of energy which are called as photons so emr consists of various photons now a photon consists of an oscillating electric field which is represented by capital e and oscillating magnetic field which is represented by capital m and they are perpendicular to each other now now we will discuss about electromagnetic radiation in this picture you can see a wave like structure this one and this represents electromagnetic radiation here are two waves first is the red wave and it represents electric field while the blue wave represents magnetic field combinedly they makes electromagnetic radiation there are various parameters which are associated with electromagnetic radiations and these include energy e frequency n and wavelength lambda now energy is directly proportional to frequency and inversely proportional to wavelength and it is indicated by the equation below in this equation e is equal to h nu 
where E is energy, H is Planck constant and nu is frequency of radiation. Now in this case, energy is directly proportional to frequency nu, while it is inversely proportional to wavelength because nu is equal to C upon lambda. So if we put this value in this equation, it becomes E is equal to H C upon lambda. So energy is proportional to uh, energy is inversely proportional to wavelength. Now frequency n is number of times electrical radiation oscillates in one second. Next term is wavelength. It is represented by lambda and it is the distance between two maxima. In this picture, these are two maxima positions. The distance between these two maxima is known as wavelength. It is represented by lambda. Lambda is a very important parameter in spectroscopy. Now, in this picture, you can see different regions of electromagnetic radiations. These regions are gamma rays, X-rays, ultraviolet rays, visible light, infrared, and radio waves. These regions are of different wavelength and different energy. Some are in longer wavelength region and some regions are in shorter wavelength region. How we can classify longer and shorter wavelength regions? See here, these are two maxima and the distance between these two maxima is higher than the distance between these two maxima. So the wavelength region is higher here while the wavelength region is shorter here. Now there is a huge difference of energy between these wavelength regions. In longer wavelength regions, the amount of energy involved is lower. In shorter wavelength region, the energy is higher. So we can say gamma rays and X rays are in higher energy region while radio waves are in lower energy region. While in case of wavelength, gamma rays and X rays are shorter wavelength side while radio waves are in longer wavelength side. Ultraviolet region is in between 200 to 400 nanometer. While visible radiation in between 400 to 800 nanometer. Visible light is again further subdivided into different regions like 400 nanometer which is represented by purple color, 500 nanometer which is around, uh, in, between, in between green and blue color, 600 nanometer which is yellow in color and 700 nanometer which is red in color. Now why we use ultraviolet spectroscopy? Ultraviolet spectroscopy is used for the detection of impurities. It is also used for qualitative analysis, quantitative analysis, single compound without chromophore, drugs with chromophoric reagent. Chromophore is a group which shifts the absorption maxima towards the longer wavelength side and thus produces a color. Different dyes are the example of chromophore. It also helps to show the relationship between different groups. It is useful to detection in the conjugation of the compound. As I said, said earlier, ultraviolet spectroscopy is mainly used for the detection of conjugation. Thank you.